Hi, and welcome back. My name's Rich Gallicini. And I'm Hugh Sung. Welcome to Cunningham Piano. And as you can see, we're back in our Germantown factory. This is such a cool place. Oh, it really is. I love this place. And so we're continuing our series on how pianos are made. And here we have a piano that's missing a lot of things here. So what are we looking at right now? Well, we're looking at the belly of the piano. That's what we call this. Okay. So the belly includes the soundboard itself. Ouch. The bridges. <laughs> The rims of the piano, okay. which are part of the furniture, but also part of the structure, ah. and the pin block. Okay, so let's take a moment and talk about what each of these basic components do. The soundboard, the bridge, the rim, and the pin block. What, what do these things sure. do? Sure. Well, first of all, let's start with the fact that when you're replacing items like this, there's really a couple ways that it can be done. But okay. what we do is when we're dealing with a great scale design, and this is a 1920s Steinway A. Mm -hmm. It's a great scale design. Mm. We want to make this piano like the day it left the factory as much as possible. So when we use the materials here, we're going to imitate what they used exactly to the best of our abilities okay. at that time. So what kind of wood is the soundboard made out of? Well, all modern pianos use spruce, okay. with very, very few exceptions. Right. Uh, so this is a white spruce, an eastern white spruce. This grew naturally in the Adirondack Mountains in New York State, in Vermont, and in Canada before the turn of the century and up through the Depression. So. Okay. Okay, um, so that was easy to get, but we weren't great conservators. Is that a word? Well, we, we didn't really conserve our, our resources. Is that what you're That's what I'm trying okay. to say. Okay, all right. We didn't conserve our resources very well, so all of that wood is cut away. To my knowledge, there's none of that available oh, for wow. tonal applications uh, like it was years ago. So what's being substituted with the loss of that incredible natural resource? Well, there are different woods. Uh, right. If if you need white spruce. There are brokers that will broker white spruce oh, interesting. Okay. by the log, by the plank, mm -hmm. uh, by the panel. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how we get it. We have uh, a couple different distributors, a couple here in the United States, um, one of which Steinway still uses today, and one in Canada that we can always depend on to give us some really beautiful woods when we need them. Well, I want to kind of focus us again. Yeah. What does the soundboard actually do? Why is this important? Sure. Well, the strings vibrate. Okay. But in order to get that sound to be as big as we want it, we need an amplifier. Okay. Uh, so the bridges act as transducers. In other words, the strings hit the bridge, the vibrations move through the bridge into the soundboard, so we have a lot more area vibrating I than a little see. tiny string. I see. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. So th this is a natural amplifier. That's right. Great. Now, okay. in order for this to work, it has to be under tension. Okay. So there's actually a curve to the soundboard. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but it's lower here. Ah. Then we're going to go down to the middle. Go ahead and run your hand from the edge in. Can you feel that? Yeah, I can. So I, I can see, I can feel it actually rising up gently towards the middle here. Okay, that's very exactly cool. right. And the high point is right around the bridge, by the way. Ah, interesting. Okay. okay. So that's a specification. All right. If we make a soundboard and it's not correct, mm -hmm. it's probably not going to produce the kind of sound that you want, or at least that's not right. to the fullest potential of its sound. That's exactly right. So the specifications of that crown have to match the specification of the bridges, which are also curved to meet that crown. And behind the soundboard, if you see this photo right here, those are ribs oh, that run behind the soundboard. You okay. see that? Yeah, sure. So the, um, from this view, the ribs are actually underneath the soundboard. What do the ribs do? They support that crown. I see. So to keep, a, help maintain yes. that shape. Okay. That's exactly right. All right. That's exactly right. And so if those ribs weren't there, would what would happen to the soundboard? It will not last the way it's supposed to. <laughs> okay. So that we can clearly say. Okay. Because there's huge yeah. down bearing. The strings are pressing down oh, on the okay. soundboard at all times. I time. see. I see. So it really helps to keep the stability. Mm -hmm. So we under now I understand that the bridges transfer the sound from the strings to the soundboard. The soundboard amplifies that. Let's talk about this piece of wood over here. This is sure. called a pin block. So lots you of can holes see in here. Lots of holes here. Okay. And laminations. Okay. So this is made out of quarter sawn rock maple, which is the same material the bridges are made out of. Okay, right. so now by laminations, you mean we see lots of layers of wood, and my limited experience with uh, woodworking myself, believe it or not, um, I can see that the grains are moving in different directions. So, so like a piece of wood here, and then here, and then kind of layered that way. Tell us why that is. Sure. Well, that was not a mistake. Okay. That was absolutely on purpose. Okay. And the idea for that is when you have one grain orientation on this piece of wood and a second grain orientation on this piece of wood, and have a change in humidity or temperature, they're designed to warp or check a different way. So they're really keeping each other right where they ought to be. Does that make sense? Is that clear? It does. And the mm -hmm. purpose for that being with these pins that are over here, we want them to be as tight as possible and to hold their position. Is that right? We so want that we, them to hold their position, yes. Because what's happening is we have the strings being run 
hooked around the bridge here, back to the pins, and the pins are what we actually turn to tune the piano. That's exactly right. So okay. a tuning pin, if you look closely, like on this photo here, mm -hmm. the tuning pin is actually a screw. Look at that. You can oh. see fine threads on it. Oh, cool. Now, it's a high-tech screw. Okay. It's made out of blued steel, and in this case, it's also plated with nickel to resist rust. Oh, very cool. Okay. But it's held in place with friction, and we actually need a big wrench, mm. a tuning hammer. Mm -hmm. Here we have a picture of a tuning hammer. Mm -hmm. So that is a specialized wrench designed to move those tuning pins just a little bit to change tone, just wow. a little bit. Wow. Wow. Very, very cool. So we've taken a look at the pin block, soundboard, bridges. Of course, we've got one this more thing that we need to talk about. Beautiful, I guess we call the rim, right? That's right. Okay. This is the rim. Now, it looks great. And is that the only function, just to look pretty? No. Ah, okay. Not at all. All right. As a matter of fact, this is the outer rim. And every piano has an outer rim. Okay. What you can't see is the inner rim. So the soundboard is glued and doweled into the inner rim, which is underneath here. Ah. So we'll take a look at this photo here. You can see clearly that there's not just an outer rim, but that there's an inner rim there too, sort of a shelf inside the piano. Which the soundboard kind of sits on top of. Okay, That's exactly cool. right. And so that rim is also multi-laminated, and mm -hmm. it's bent with steam and pressure on most pianos being built today mm -hmm. into the shape of a piano. Mm -hmm. And after being bent into that shape, it forgets that it was ever a straight piece of wood and becomes very stable. Interesting. Wow. Very, very cool. And then uh, after whatever work needs to be done when we're rebuilding and restoring a piano with all these components, then the iron frame, where does the iron frame go? Well, the frame goes, if you and I were installing the iron frame and it usually takes more than two people, we use a winch. Remember, they weigh 450 pounds. Yeah. It would be carefully lowered into the piano okay. right here uh -huh. into the exact spot where it ought to be. Okay. Now, we have locators all over the piano so we know exactly where that frame is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I've had people say, well, wait a minute, the frame is bolted in and there's dowels that keep it at a particular height. Why do you even need to have all these locator holes? Well, remember we said a millimeter or two of difference can be a big difference to the piano. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that the plate is perfectly where it was, not a little bit this way, a little bit that way, or a little bit back and forth, because even that little bit mm. can change the dynamics of the tone. And that, that will sense. just fit snugly right on top of this whole construction here, right? That's exactly right. Very, very cool. Well, how heavy is this by itself without the iron frame? Well, in our last video, if you might recall, Hugh tried to pick up a cast iron frame. And I failed. He failed. <laughs> now, the two of us. Uh, I don't know. Let's see if we... I'm, I don't know. I'm pretty wimpy. Okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. All right. Did you have your Wheaties this morning? No. Uh, <laughs> one, two, two three. three. Wow, right. I can actually... I feel vindicated. I can lift the... That's pretty amazing. I mean, it's not light, but I could actually lift this Well, piano. this entire assembly, okay. including their legs on the piano right now, too. Right, right. All right. of that included okay. weigh less than that cast iron frame. Wow, much less. Yeah. Wow. Okay, very, very... But, of course, we haven't... The action is still missing from this, but at least we're looking at the major, big, wooden parts of the piano. That's right. Very, very cool. Rich, thank you so much for that amazing explanation. Well, thanks for coming in and doing this. This is a lot of fun. This is. And, and I hope you got something out of this video. Absolutely. We're slowly seeing bits and pieces of the piano coming together or different components like this. This is great. I hope you're having as much fun as we are because we're having, having a lot of fun. I'm having a blast. Please be sure to let us know what you think. And if you have any comments or more importantly, if you have any questions, sure. be sure to leave them in the comments section below. And as I always mention, every week we have a, uh, a newsletter that goes out that lets folks know when we have new articles and new videos like this one. So be sure to go to our website at www.cunninghampiano.com to sign up for that weekly newsletter. Just go scroll down to the bottom and you'll see the sign up uh, box in there. So for Cunningham Piano, I'm Hugh Sung. And I'm Rich Galassini. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.